Okay guys, so welcome back to the second part or the third part of our discussion. So uh, going back, we are discussing the protozoan parasite, particularly the amoeba. And the third part is about the free-living pathogenic amoeba. So free-living amoeba, they are found in soil and water habitats throughout the world. So this amoeba ingests bacteria, yeast, and other organisms as food source. So unlike the true parasite again, the pathogenic free-living amoeba can complete their life cycles in the environment without entering a human or an animal host. Therefore, free-living pathogenic amoeba, they can exist on their own, okay, without needing any host. Okay, so a kind amoeba, so they reproduce by mitosis. How about the method for the reproduction of the uh, entamoebas? That is through binary fission. But for a kind amoeba, they reproduce through the process of mitosis. So they are ubiquitous microorganism. And when we say ubiquitous, they are found almost everywhere. Okay. So, they are found in air, aquaria, bottled mineral, in the environment, in the soil, in the swimming pool. And again, take note that they are found in contaminated contact lenses solution. That's why they have the capability to cause amoebic keratitis. Okay? So, the trophozoid of the amoeba Okay, or the trophozoite of the acanthamoeba, that is, it has a large carosome. I believe that uh, I discussed this in the part 2 of our discussion again. So, I'll focus on the large carosome that is uh, eccentrically located. Okay, so, eccentric siya, nasa gilid, hindi siya dapat central. Okay, so, it uses again pseudopods for locomotion and movement. So, um, and again, as a review, what are the two functions, two main functions of pseudopods? Those are for locomotion and phagocytosis. Okay, so the acanthamoebasis, it has double walled. Okay, it's double, it is double walled. So it has an outer wrinkled wall and an inner polygonal, polygonally shaped wall. So, as you can see here, again, it has a large carosome without the presence of peripheral chromatin. And it's, it uses an organ termed as the um, acanthopodia, okay, the acanthopodia for locomotion, even if that is in its cis stage. Okay, so we have here the life cycle of the acanthamoeba. Okay, so I already... Um, recorded this in I thought I recorded this in the last part however nag stop pala siya because it only allows uh, 37 minutes of discussion okay so unknowingly I was discussing tapos hindi naman pala siya na record okay so we have here the cyst form that is present in the environment that is ubiquitous in nature okay so acanthamoeba species are ubiquitous in the environment and they have been found in a variety of sites, including this one in the soil, okay, in the water, either that is fresh, brackish, or seawater, even in field grown vegetable, in sewage, as well as swimming pools, medicinal pools, okay, and even in contact lenses, okay. So, Akantamiba has two stages we have here the cis stage, which can exist, exist. Okay, to form trophozoites in life cycle, okay, and lacks a flagellate stage. Okay, why do we say that it lacks a flagellate stage? Because for the Naegleria cholerae, which is another free living parasite, it has three forms the cis stage, the trophozoite stage, and the flagellated form. So the trophozoite can undergo the process of mitosis, okay, to produce. Um, several copies of this organism okay so the trophozoites are the infective form okay how about the infective form for the entamoeba solitica that is the cis stage mom you have mentioned that the trophozoite cannot survive the acidic 
pH of this stomach, bakit din trophozoic ang kanyang infective stage? Guys, because, okay, this is not an intestinal amoeba. Okay, it is not an intestinal amoeba. So, it is an extra intestinal amoeba. It, um, it causes disease or infection outside the intestine. So, the amoeba, cyst and trophozoic can enter humans in various ways. Okay, so through the eye, Okay, that is um, when someone is swimming, okay, through nasal passages to the lower respiratory tract, okay, so inhalation, okay, nasal passages, therefore that is inhalation, and then through ulcerated or broken skin, so if you have broken skin there, that is actually a passageway for organism as the entry point to invade your body. Okay, so through the eyes, if the eyes are infected, that may result to severe keratitis of the eye. So through nasal passages to the, to the lower respiratory tract, so it results in gay, okay, granulomatous amoebic encephalitis or disseminated disease in individuals with compromised immune system. Okay, and through ulcerated or broken skin, that may result also to gay, okay, disseminated disease or skin lesion in individuals with a compromised immune system. So, either that is um, you acquired this parasite through the nasal or through a broken skin, it can lead to same types of diseases, okay? So, this one. Unlike for the infection of the eye that may lead to amoebic keratite. Peace. Okay, so pathogenesis and clinical manifestation. Again, the acantamoeba species are the causative agent for granulomatous amoebic encephalitis. So skin lesions are important diagnostic feature of this infection. So um, an ocular sur this is an ocular surface pathogen. Okay, the this is for the amoebic keratitis. It has an incubation period of 10 days, okay? And clinical manifestations are mental abnormalities, meningism, localized neurological, as well as coma, okay? So the, the gay, okay, gay no lang because it's very long. Gay starts slowly with symptoms like headache, nausea, dizziness, irritability, and low-grade fever. Okay, there are also changes in behavior. Okay, parang girl, parang tayo ito kapag nagre-mens. Changes in behavior are an important sign. Okay, because the target of the acantamoeba is the central, not only the central system, central nervous system, but the brain. Okay, so other CNS signs may include seizures, focal neurolo neurologic signs, diplopia, ataxia, confusion, and personality changes. Okay? Nag-iiba-iba na siya ng pag-uugali ng personality, hindi na po siya nababaliw. But that can be a possible effect of infection to parasitic, uh, parasitic infection, particularly the acantamoeba species, which may progress to form the gait. Okay, so pathogenesis, so route of invasion in the CNS through the circulatory system, okay, through the circulatory system. Therefore, they enter through the circulation to reach the brain, okay, to reach the brain. Unlike for Naegleria cholerae, they use the olfactory nerve, okay, the olfactory nerve, but for the acantamoeba, they can access the brain or they can go to the brain to our respiratory, circulatory, sorry, to our circulatory system. Most affected areas of the brain are the posterior fossa structures, the encephalon, thalamus, and brain stem. So the diagnosis for acantamoeba encephalitis that is done after death. So most likely that is through an autopsy. Okay, so the, there is the demonstration of the parasite in tissues using histopathologic stains and microscopy. Therefore, they will get brain sample, okay, for histologic stains. 
Okay? For acanthamoeba keratitis, that is true epithelial biopsy. So, epithelial biopsy. Okay, and again, how can you acquire acanthamoeba keratitis? True, okay, true an infected contact lens solution. That's why, guys, you follow your doctor's pre prescription or suggestion that you have to change the solution of your contact lenses because that can be contaminated by acanthamoeba species. Ma'am, okay, question. How about if we ingest the infective stage of the acanthamoeba species? Magkakaroon po ba kami ng disease? Okay, would that result to gay? Of course not, guys, because the infective stage, which is the trophozoid, cannot survive the acidic pH of the stomach. Okay, so it caused the infective stage trophozoid can cause an infection to humans because it uses other entry points, which are the nose, the eyes, and broken skin. Okay, so we proceed with the other uh, free-living pathogenic amoeba, which is the Aegularia cholerae. Okay, guys, take note for the um, gay, okay, for acanthamoeba infection that results to gay, it, it has a very high mortality rate or and death rate. Masyadong madami ang namamatay. Sobrang konti lang ang nakaka-survive due to acanthamoeba infection. Even for Negleria cholerae infection. Okay? So that is even for Negleria cholerae infection. So, it is a free-living amiboflagellate. Why amiboflagellate? Because this is the only Okay, among the parasites that we discussed under amoeba, it has it is the only parasite with a flagellate form. Therefore, it has three different forms: the cyst, the trophozoite, and the flagellate form. So, with only one pathogenic species. Okay, so that is the Negleria cholerae. So that is the only pathogenic species of the Negleria. So, it can cause fatal meningal encephalitis. The trophozoite forms a pair of flagella originating from the tip of a pear-shaped cell body. Okay, so we have here, uh, this one, this is the trophozoite form. This is the flagellated form. Okay, so that is the cyst form. So, we discussed the life cycle of Negleria cholerae. So, as you can see here, the Negleria cholerae has three stages in its life cycle. The cyst, the trophozoite, and the flagellated form. Okay? So, the trophozoite replicate by promytosis. Okay? Ma'am, promytosis. So, in promytosis, the nuclear membrane remains intact. Unlike in my mitosis, okay, so, the nuclear membrane does not remain intact. Okay? So, that is your difference. So, we have here, so we continue. I'm sorry, we continue. The Negleria fullaria, as you can see here, is also found in water and in soil. So, Negleria fullaria is found in fresh water, in soil, in thermal discharges of power plants, geothermal wells, and poorly chlorinated recreational as well as in tap water. The trophozoites can turn in a temporary non-feeding flagellated forms which usually revert back to the trophozoite stage. Okay, The trophozoites infect humans or animals by penetrating the nasal mucosa usually during swimming okay, or sinus irrigation. Okay? So as you can see there, we have here an example, water-related activities such as swimming, underwater diving, or other water sports can result in water entering the nose. And if the water is contaminated with Negleria cholerae and it entered in the nasal cavity, the amoeba penetrates the nasal mucosa. And then the amoeba 
migrate to the brain via the olfactory nerves causing PAM. Okay? If a cantamiba has gay, Negleria foliare has PAM. Okay? Primary amoebic meningoencephalitis even in healthy individuals. Therefore, guys, um, the immune system does not protect us from from Negleria foliare because the Negleria foliare parasite can inflict a disease even to healthy individuals. So the trophocytes in the CSF and brain tissue, the flagellated forms occasionally in the CSF is the diagnostic stage. And again, what do you mean by diagnostic stage? These are the stages that are seen in body fluids. Yan yung nakikita mo kapag nagaran ka na ng diagnostic test sa laboratory. That's why that is referred as the diagnostic stage. Okay? So, the cysts are not seen in the brain tissue. Why? Because that is a watery environment and they will not insist because they do not see or they do not feel uh, a threat in their life. So, hindi sila mag insist Okay, we proceed with PAM. So, what is PAM? Okay, so PAM, that is again, primary amoebic meningo and set. Phalitis. How about gay? That is granulomatous amoebic encephalitis. How about PAM again? PAM is primary amoebic meningo encephalitis. Okay, so only four people, so th this is the history, only four people in the US, so that is in the US, out of 143 have survived infection. From 1962 to 2016. Apat lang ang nabuhay from the 143 infection. Okay? So, imagine nyo yung mortality niya. Okay? Mas sobrang dami na namamatay. Okay? So, water containing Negleria foliare enter the nose. Okay? Through what, guys? How do it um, how do it migrate to the central nervous system or to the brain? Through the olfactory nerve. Okay? So, you can only be infected when a contaminated water goes into your nose and it access your nasal mucosa. Okay? And it uses the olfactory nerve to infect the brain. Okay? Therefore, you cannot be infected if you ingest the parasite. Okay? So, I hope, guys, that that is clear. Acquired oral or nasal. Ma'am, how about that one? Okay, oral. Okay, acquired or oral intranasal when swimming in contaminated pools, lakes, and rivers. But you have there the term oral. When the water, okay, um, goes through your or oral cavity, but, okay, accidentally it, um, it goes through your nasal mucosa, that is the time that it can infect and it can enter the nasal mucosa. Hindi ibig sabihin ng dyan ng dahil na inum mo, uh, pumunta sa stomach mo, may infect ka. No, it is always through the olfactory nerve. Okay, so sw when swimming, acquired oral or intranasal when swimming and contaminated pools, lakes and river, as well as the inhalation of contaminated dust containing the trophozoite. Okay? So, you can still acquire this Negleria foliare through this mode of transmission. Okay? So, what else? Next. So, according to CDC or Center for Disease and Control, you cannot get infected from swallowing water with uh, contaminated with Negleria foliare. Okay? Again, that is um, a research conducted by the CDC. So, hindi mo po yan makukuha. So, Negleria invades brain and meninges via the nasal mucosa. Infection by inhalation of cysts in dust or soil particles has also been reported. So, the pathogenic species are able to survive 
in a chlorinated water up to 5 microgram per ml, drinking or swimming bacteria uh, or dream, drinking or swimming um, may also lead to Neglaria fowleri infection. But it doesn't mean nakapag lumangoy kayo sa ilog. Okay? Magkakaroon ka yan na ng Neglaria fowleri infection. Magkakaroon ka ng PAM. Okay? So, a requirement there is the water must be infected and it will have an access to your nasal mucosa. Okay? So, PAM is characterized by fever, headache, vomiting, signs of meningeal irritation, and encephalitis with rapid progression to coma and death. Okay, so rapid progression. The incubation period, so that is, um, I think, up to 10 days. So, most likely, the individual will die within the 10 days period. PAM exhibits increased WBC with high percentage of polymorphonuclear cell, hypo glycoracha and elevated protein level. What do you mean by hypoglycoracha? That is low level of glucose in the CSF. So that is the counterpart of hypoglycemia. Um, but hypoglycemia refers to low blood sugar level in the blood. Okay, this is for the CSF. Okay, so diagnosis, demonstration of trophozoites in the brain and CSF as well as the use of um, bacteria-seeded agar medium. So aspirate, suspected of neglaria infection, may be introduced in this medium. The trophozoid be identified with the presence of blunt, lobos pseudopodia with directional motility. Okay, so molecular techniques are also possible. So treatment, that is polypene antibiotic amphotericin B. But aside from this one, I'm so certain that there are other um, treatment or other medicine that is used together with this one because again they are targeting the brain and take note um, medicine do not have an easy access to the brain because of the presence of the blood brain barrier so we have here the the flagellated form and this is the cyst form um, showing the double walled cyst okay it has Two walls, cyst wall, and this is the other cyst wall. It does not show peripheral chromatin, so it shows a central karyosome, central large karyosome, unlike for the um, acanthamoeba species. So this it has a flagella, therefore this is the flagellated form. Okay, so these are the three stages. The cyst can exist to form the amyboid trophozoite so the amyboid trophozoite can um, can become the flagellated form so the flagellated form can turn back to become the amyboid trophozoite ma'am what is the essence of having another stage because this one guys since it has flagella it has an easier access to um, food okay so mas madali siyang makahanap ng pagkain niya if that is in flagellated form okay so guys, um, I I have a mnemonic here for Pam and Gay. So I, I was the one who made this mnemonic um, way back in 2017 during the first time that I teach this subject with uh, the batch of Pinoa and Dress. Okay, and sino pa ba yung mga batch nila? I forgot, I forgot sila CJ. Okay, CJ Tamayao, Ian Castillo, okay, as well as Salva. So, here it is, guys, for you to easily memorize, okay, or, yes, to memorize the Pam and the Gay. Remember, we have Pamintang Negra. Pamintang Negra. Ang Negra maitim. So, Paminta. Pam for, of course, the disease that is the Primary amoebic meningeal encephalitis that is caused by Neglaria fowleri. Okay, pamintang negra. And another is, I can't be gay. Okay, I can't be gay. I can't be gay, that is acanthamoeba for gay. Gay for granulomatous. Okay, what is gay again, guys? 
in 1, 2, 3, 4, granulomatous, amoebic, encephalitis. So, pamentang negra and I can't be gay. Okay? So, whatever. So, I think I discussed this mnemonic to you already. So, the N for enterocytes, okay, which refers to the intestine, amoeba as uh, a protozoan parasite, histamines, the tissues, and lytica lysis. Okay, therefore, the entamoeba histolytica has the capability to lyse the tissues. Okay, so I saw this in the internet. Okay, guys, let's review. Okay, so I hope you had a lot of learning with listening to Mom Susie. Okay, so review tayo. Number one, okay, this is the only pathogenic ciliata. That is... 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ano na ulit yun, guys? That is the Balantijum coli. That is the only pathogenic parasite amoeba. Okay? So, that is Antamoeba histolytica if you exclude the pre-living amoeba. Okay? Antamoeba histolytica is morphologically similar with this part. Okay? And even heart mani, but the heart mani is smaller in size. Which has the flagellated form that is the Neglaria fulleri. Parasite regarded as old man with eyeglasses. That is the Charja lambia. So, isipin nyo na lang. Charja, yung mga guard starts with letter G. Most madaming naka eyeglasses. Okay? Char. Differentiate the trophozoite from the cyst stage. The cyst stage that is spherical in shape. Okay? So, unlike the trophozoite, they have these pseudopods. The trophozoite are the infective stage 4, cantamoeba, and negleria. But the cyst stage is the infective form 4, and uh, entamoeba histolytica. What stages would you expect to see in a form stool? Yung matigas. Okay, matigas na poop. So, we have the cyst stage what stages would you expect to see in semi-formed stool? Both the cyst and the trophozoite. Why is blood present in the stool of a patient with amoebic dysentery? Because in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the entamoeba histolytica can invade the tissues resulting to bleeding. Okay? So, associated with contact lenses, contaminated with parasite, that is, the Acanthamoeba species. Okay? Pag ganito, mauubusan na ikaw na papakwis, di ba? Common mode of transmission for Antamoeba histolytica that is, that is through fecal oral route transmission or ingestion of contaminated uh, food and water. Infective stage of Acanthamoeba, Trophozoid. Associated with the disease palm, Negleria fulleri. Pamentang negra. Pamentang. Pam. Pamentang negra. So, pam for negleria fulleri. Treatment for commensal amoeba. Yes, like, um, entamoeba coli. Okay. Entamoeba dispar. Ano yung treatment nila? Wala. Because they do not require treatment since they are not parasitic in nature. Amoeba that can be acquired through kissing. Your favorite. Okay, so that is entamoeba gingivalis. Okay, other methods of transmission, sharing of utensils and droplet spray. Okay, this is often mistaken as bacterial meningitis. Ito ang hindi ko nasabi sa inyo. So, the symptoms of PAM um, resembles the symptoms of bacterial meningitis. Okay, so, I wait lang. Is that bacterial meningitis? Yes, yes, tama. So, this is often mistaken as bacterial meningitis. That is PAM. Okay, that is PAM. Caused by Negleria fulleri. Okay, so differentiate the chromatidal bodies of E. histolytica and E. coli. For E. histolytica, it has round blind ends. Okay, Round blunt ends. How about for E. coli? 
splinter-like pointed ends. Okay, splinter-like pointed ends. Assignment. Okay, for 10 points, guys. Is there an amoeba that can be transferred to other individual through sex? Uy. Okay. Meron kaya? Meron kayang amoeba? We are not referring to, ano na ulit yun, Trichomonas vaginalis. Because, uh, that is not an amoeba. Okay? So, trichomonas is not an amoeba. So, if there is, Oh, so, if your answer is yes, what is that parasite and how? Paanong nagiging, paano siya natatransmit through sexual intimate contact? And no, if your answer is no, you should still explain why. Bakit walang aniba na natatransfer through sexual contact? So, assignment for 10 points. Um, please write your answers in the LMS. Okay, so you will have their uh, under learning task, you will have their assignment portion for this question. Okay, but um, please see to it na hindi kayo parapareho ng sagot. Unless meron talaga, alam nyo talaga yung tama, right? Okay, but what I mean is that please do not send your answers to your classmates because you are not helping them to study or to do the research, to do the research on their own. Okay? Maganda yung meron kayong mga kaibigan, but, but it doesn't mean na gagawin nyo na yun. Because that is a form of cheating. Okay? So, I hope, guys, okay, I hope na marami kayong natutunan because I'm really putting so much effort to make this recorded videos. Okay? And, um, even if I had this presentation before, the PowerPoint presentation, ini-improve ko kasi siya. Okay? So, hindi naman ako nakakontento kay Belisario. But most of the contents of this PowerPoint presentation is taken from Belisario. So, I also include other books. Okay? So, please lang. Mag-aral kayong maigi. We will get through this. This pandemic will end. And you will become registered medical technologist in the right time, in God's perfect timing, as well as to be your the future doctor of your family, mga gustong magmed. Okay? So, I wish you um, a lot of blessings. Okay? God bless everyone.